I'm from Denmark, which is a culture where we start on time and end on time. And not 15 minutes after, not 15 minutes before. So now I'm really, really struggling. <laughs> because we are now in the discussion part, and I haven't even started my presentation yet. But <laughs> I will uh, see what I can do to get us there, maybe not on time, but just a little bit after. I'm going to talk about um, collaborative practice based research, groups, circles, and networks. And if we take a look at the NICE memorandum, it speaks both of uh, forming and fostering lively research clusters um, where we exchange appropriate research methodologies. And it also speaks about the importance of bringing together research and practice. So my talk is going to be about both of those issues. But before I go into um, bringing together research and practice, I want to say a little bit about um, what is pulling them apart. It is um, that they are, if you, can, if you imagine that they are on different tectonic plates, and there is a place in between the plate, plates, that is the place that I will talk about, the place in between the bringing together. But if we look at what is pulling them apart, and we have the um, practice part over here, it's we want good results, we want satisfied users, high quality career guidance, we want it to be cost efficient, and we also would like to have satisfying work conditions for those working there. And if we take a look at research, we also want good results. We want them to be published, in high impact journals, not necessarily uh, um, looking at the impact on practice, but the journal impact. We want new research funding, research aids, teaching, dissemination, and communication. So what you see here is actually two practices um, linked to different societal structures that might be pulling them apart. But there are also things that can bring them together. Um, so uh, if we um, look at uh, a piece that uh, McMahon and Watson wrote in 2007, they talk about a shift in career research from modern to postmodern. And they talk about the role of the researcher and also the role of the partic participant. About the researcher, they write that we will go from a detached theory testing on Luca, say that to my people, <laughs> together with the work that you had, towards an interested interpretive procedure testing participant observer. And for the participant in the research, they say that we will see a shift from a passive subject to an active participant, and they describe the research process from that will shift from a one-way one mode directed by the researcher to a two-way interactive mode, which is more collaborative. So, um, being on different tectonic plates, I think we need to pay attention to um, how we are creating bridges, how we are helping people jump across the plates, so it's not people um, from different plates talking together, but people actually being able to take part on in both practices. So I'm going to say a little bit about how that can be done from my experience as a researcher. Um, and this experience started in Canterbury, and I was, while we were at the summit in Canterbury, I was also drafting a response to a tender put out by the municipalities in Denmark. And um, they were looking for an evaluation of um, development project of career education in secondary school. And I wrote a response, and I would characterize the first response as very traditional, because I wrote that, you know, I will follow and, uh, the development project, I would do interviews, observations, and then there will be a report in the end. And uh, that was the, my response to the tender, which I didn't submit. Because before that, 
I spoke to some colleagues of mine and I was complaining a little bit because I wasn't happy with it because it sounded so boring to do. <laughs> and I was the one who was going to do it. <laughs> so I actually didn't really want to do what I was about to submit. And then they took a good look at me and they said, why don't you write what you, based on your experience and your previous research results, see it for this purpose? We know that this is not what they ask for in the tender, but, be, but maybe they don't ask because, because they don't know of the strengths of this more collaborative approach about the movement from the modern to the postmodern area. Um, no, not area, uh, research roles, um, about new ways for users to participate in research. So I went back and I spent the whole night writing a new proposal uh, to the tender where I included the concept of research circles. And research circles is a way of bringing together researchers and practitioners in activities where you do research together. And what we would do research together on in this specific project was the development projects that the um, practitioners did. And this is of course based on action learning um, theories. Um, and the thing is that when they received this uh, proposal, the municipalities uh, in Denmark, together with the National Teachers Organization, was very happy about it. Because what they could see was that together with the report, which is now a book, <laughs> in the end, they would get collab close collaborations between researchers and practitioners, um, sort of um, helping to take the development projects that the uh, practitioners did further than just having a researcher looking at them. Now we would, we would actually be discussing them along the way. Uh, so uh, a research circle is a democratic and collaborative process. And it's very interesting that there's no mandatory method of investigation in the circle. So it's actually very open towards ethical or um, uh, approaches towards um, interpretive inquiry. You can decide in the circle together. But of course, it, it builds on the assumption that the knowledge production is collaborative and complementary and not an asymmetrical transfer of knowledge from experts to users. Now, um, this was about um, the research circles, but it was my experience with this was that it was not easy for me to write this proposal because it was not what was asked for in the beginning. And to get there, I needed support of um, my colleagues. And the thing is that career guidance research in many countries is not a big field. So you might not have very many colleagues. And maybe the colleagues that you have are doing something that is very different from what you are doing. So your closest colleague might not be the one in the office next to you. It might actually be the one sitting next to you today whose office is in a different country. And I think it's very important for us as a community to realize that and to be able to reach out to each other for that kind of support. And um, I uh, came across this book. It's called Reflections on a Scientific Career Behind the Professor's CV. I don't know if you know it, but um, uh, Andreas was speaking about role models. And I think when I read this book, I also got ideas from these people uh, without even um, knowing them or them knowing me. What's interesting about this book is that all of these um, uh, stories that are written here reflect networks, collaboration, 
uh, as a big part of a scientific career. But it also reflects that the career of the scientist is interwoven with the research processes. So it's actually not possible to distinguish the two. Just to, um, <coughs> for fun, I think you should know a little bit about what you can find in this book. You can find a rough guide for postdoctoral researchers, but you can also find paddling furiously under the surface micro strategies for the labor of an academic research career. Seize the chances, be courageous, and trust your mentors and your intuition. And this one, from theory boy to practitioner's value. Interesting. <laughs> Career fulfillment, the journey to tenure and beyond. So, I'm coming to the end of this presentation, if I can find my way to this papers. Um, if we add to this a democratic ideal of research, um, producing knowledge collaborative amongst researchers, but also amongst researchers and practitioners, is not a quick fix. It's a long-term, time-consuming and demanding relationship which depend very much on available resources. But these resources might be available if we have the courage to suggest these methods as promising methods for doing research in our field. In our field. And I think that we now, with the NICE Memorandum, also have uh, an interesting policy document that can support our efforts. But however, these words that I'm saying now, however true they may sound, we will all have to walk the talk if we um, want to get there, and we have to um, co-create the evidence, as Tristan was mentioning this morning. So, thank you for still being awake, and <laughs> I almost finished that fall. <laughs>